On Tuesday, October 4th, 2022, country music legend Loretta Lynn passed away in the comfort of her remarkable Tennessee home. Known for creating hit singles like You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man and the classic Coal Miner's Daughter, this icon released dozens of albums throughout her life and earned three Grammy Awards to go along with her six-decade career in the industry. But over the past few years, a series of health issues, including a stroke in 2017, would bring her performing career to a close and large largely confine Loretta to inside the walls of her longtime home, an estate located in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee, that has come to be known simply as Loretta Lynn's Ranch. This talented musician and her former hubby, Doolittle Mooney Lynn, first moved here over 50 years ago in 1966. For Lynn, discovering this place was love at first sight, and after purchasing the property, she was utterly floored by what came along with it. She once told the Travel Channel, I said I want that house. At the time, we didn't know the town came with it. That's right, the entire small town of Hurricane Mills was more or less a gift with purchase that the Lynns became the proud new owners of at the same time that they picked up their new estate. This one-of-a-kind place was originally established in the early 19th century, more specifically in 1814. 50 years later, during the course of the Civil War, there was a battle that unfolded nearby in 1863. The exact details on that clash aren't widely known, but Loretta would come to believe that 19 soldiers were killed during the course of the conflict, and she even discovered cannonballs that had been fired by Confederate soldiers littered around the grounds of her property. And and these cannonballs, she found them over a hundred years later. About 30 years after the Civil War came to an end, the estate would pass into the hands of a new owner named James T. Anderson. It would remain with the Anderson family well into the 20th century, who made a series of improvements to the area, including damming the nearby river and installing the first electric light in the county. Once the Lynns moved in during the late 1960s, Loretta and her husband made the place their own by installing something a little more unorthodox, a total recreation of Loretta's childhood home in Butcher Holler, Kentucky. Her original family home was where Loretta spent some of the happiest days of her life, and so she had the whole thing replicated to ensure that she could relive her childhood memories whenever she felt like it. The story goes that Loretta's father bought the original property in Kentucky for only $600, which for a family as poor as they were at the time was still a risky investment. But considering Loretta, her parents, and her seven siblings had been living out of a one-room cabin before this, well, let's just say it was definitely time for an upgrade. Outside of literally bringing her childhood to life, Loretta and Doolittle also installed what's known as Loretta Lynn's Coal Mine Number no. 5, a site that contains a replica of the mine her father used to work in, as well as the Coal Miner's Daughter Museum. This is a place that houses the artifacts of her life and career, preserved in an 18,000 square foot complex that she built in 2001 to house everything that she had been hoarding up over the years. As you might imagine, with a house this incredibly customized, Loretta would spend as much time here as she possibly could over the years. Sure, she'd move out of the plantation home and into a smaller structure also on the premises, but that never stopped her from taking every opportunity to boast about how much she loved living here and how beautiful her home was by posting images to Instagram, including this snowy scene from the past February. Considering how much this place meant to Loretta, it shouldn't come as a surprise to learn that once her health began to decline, she seldom, if ever, left its comfortable confines. Then, in the early days of October 2022, the Superstar's family would be the ones to break the sad news over social media that Loretta had passed away at the age of 90. But part of me believes that even after having passed on, Loretta still isn't going anywhere. Why? Well, because when she bought this property, it came with more than just the town of Hurricane Mills. It also included a healthy dose of the afterlife. First things first, Loretta Lynn strongly believed that she had paranormal skills. The online website Wide Open Country once wrote about her. She has been frank about her psychic abilities and the numerous ghostly encounters she's experienced. And while her world famous song This Haunted House wasn't written about her longtime home, but instead was about the death of her good friend Patsy Cline, it isn't to say that Loretta's house is entirely normal, because it most certainly isn't. 
After living in her home for a number of years and experiencing multiple ghostly sightings, as well as unexplained occurrences, Loretta would invite paranormal experts in to investigate who uncovered that the role her estate played in the Civil War would lead to a series of spirits taking up all throughout its 3,000 acres. Lynn once even attempted to hold a seance in the home to contact the spirits and wound up coming into communication with the property's former owner, James T. Anderson. According to reports on the seance, Anderson began angrily shaking the table everyone was sitting around with remarkable force and eventually broke the table entirely after lifting it into the air and then slamming it back down on the ground. Following this eventful occurrence, Loretta would come to believe that Anderson's spirit never departed the property, and even some of her staff members would report sightings of his ghostly presence vanishing almost as soon as it would appear. Speaking on the unwillingness of her home's former owner to properly depart, Loretta would tell the Travel Channel, He's protecting me. He knows that I took care of him. I wouldn't let nothing happen to that house over there, not as long as I'm living. I don't think the kids would either, so I don't think Mr. Anderson has anything to worry about. Well, now that Loretta has sadly passed on, we'll discover just how true that statement really is. But if I'm being honest, I'd also consider it pretty unlikely that Lynn's kids ever give up ownership of this family estate. After all, Loretta Lynn's ranch wasn't only her private home, it's also evolved into a tourist destination. Nation. Not only can you check out Loretta Lynn's ranch to feast your eyes on its many sights, smells, and sounds, you can even turn your visit into a full-fledged family vacation, thanks to flexible lodging, including campgrounds, RV spots, and cabin rentals, all of which you can book here for as little as $25 a night. The cabins are a little pricier than that, closer to 100 a night, but they also accommodate up to 8 people while providing amenities like linens, coffee maker, microwave, TV, fridge, and a whole lot more. Regardless of how you choose to spend your nights, it's what you can get up to during the day out here that's the real selling point. That includes touring the entire grounds with stop-offs along the way at the Doll and Fan Museum, as well as the Native American Artifact Museum, which honors Loretta's heritage with over 5,000 relics and special pieces on display. You can even check out that butcher hauler replica that captures every little detail of Loretta's childhood, right down to her former keepsakes and the extremely unique wallpaper that once hung on its walls. Admission for these facilities is somewhere around $35 per person and children under 10 get in for free. There are also events like seasonal chuck wagon races, holiday concerts, and horseback riding trails, while the ranch is also home to the country's largest amateur motocross championship. Some people might come for the ghosts, others for the fast bikes, but one thing's for sure, there's a little something for everyone at Loretta Lynn's Ranch. And I can only imagine that as her millions of fans come to terms with her passing, that these tours are going to become even more popular than ever, as people flock from all over the world to remind themselves what made Loretta one of the most special musical artists of her or any other generation. Who knows, maybe I'll even run into some of you there in the near future. But for now, that's going to bring this house tour to a close. Before you head out though, put on Loretta's shoes and ask yourselves this. Would you rather live in a haunted house for the better part of your life or have to share your private home with tourists stopping by every day to have a look-see? Let me know in the comments down below. When you're finished with that, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. My name is Kara, follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!